to do a Kiss Mods and Play. Uh, it's Ruin, and I don't know. I'm getting ready to go out. It's. Ugh. Hopefully, I can get ready enough for my satisfaction in about half an hour, because that would be. Ugh, maybe a little under. Because uh, that would be where it's going to be cutting into time, where uh, since. I have no other reason to be out at the bar tonight. Um, yeah, if I go any later, it would just be like, what's the point? Um, so, it was hair wash day, and my previous video, um, I might have um, deleted it, or at least set it to private uh, by the time I upload this, just because apparently, like, I shot about a minute and a half, and only 20 seconds uploaded. But here's the thing is like I, I went to YouTube on my phone app. I went to the YouTube phone app on my Android phone. It's Moto E6. No, E4. E6 is the new one. Um, and, uh, and then what happened? And it tells me even though I have just more than enough, like just barely more than enough to stream from mobile, it's still telling me that I don't have enough people to stream from mobile, or maybe something else I've done has upset them and they won't let me stream from mobile, and because I don't have a working webcam or whatnot, I can't really test this for science on my own anyway. Uh, yes, um, one of you, uh, Cherryberry48, uh, sent me a webcam. Uh, it is allegedly plug-and-play. I have yet to see this work as it's supposed to. Like, it won't, like, I'll plug it in, but it won't play. And, um, at first I thought, okay, maybe it's the, um, because right now I'm working from my laptop. My desktop has not had a working power supply for some time. Um, I know it's the power supply. I've, I, I, I like built this thing with a friend of mine talking me through most of it. Uh, unfortunately, it's so goddamn hot, and I can't afford to run the AC um, on anything more than the economy setting. I do try to set aside a couple hours a day where I will run it on the timer, and then after the timer shuts off, after two hours, I'll turn it to the economy setting, just to get the place cooled down. Just to get it all cooled down shortly after I wake up, which is usually around the hottest part of the day, around 11.30, noonish. I don't know, it was like 10.30 this morning, so up earlier than I'm used to. Why? Because it's so goddamn hot, even with the AC on um, economy. So yeah, I went uh, the other day when that thing... Uh, so yeah, I went to go stream, and it's telling me, you cannot has stream! And I'm like, okay... So I just decided to shoot that little quick note to people, and I was talking for about a minute and a half, and apparently only 20 seconds of it actually uploaded. And it was all done from the YouTube app. Like, I don't know what the hell is there to explain that shit. But, yeah, that is why this is, um... Uh, uh, has a very different look from that one, and does indeed have the watermark that you're all so in love with at this point. It's practically my watermark at this point. Oh, gosh. No, I'm not going to do that to uh, to them, but yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to try and claim ownership over a watermark, but you know, I'm starting to feel like maybe some of my long-time subscribers wouldn't even recognize my videos without that the kind master watermark that would be <laughs> uh so uh oh yeah i watched that blair white um jessica yaniv debate which i say in dick quotes but i'm putting argon oil in my hands so i can work some into my hair because I just did the castor oil part, right? Uh, oh gosh. I 
was honestly pleasantly surprised to see Blair White pretty much say, and I know this is like pretty damn close to a quote, even, was she's saying to Yaniv that someone's immigration status is irrelevant no. when, when Yaniv themself is clearly just malicious, being maliciously litigious against them. Because <laughs> cause that's, that's basically what's happening. Oh my gosh. I kind of feel for Cat Black, because uh, apparently people were all up her ass about the whole Yaniv situation that has been brought to light in the last couple of weeks. Um, and I, I trust Kat when she says that she'd literally never heard of Yaniv before all these monkey shines went down and people started demanding that she have some thoughts on the situation. Because honestly, I had never heard of this person either before all of this went down. And um, and then what happens? Um, now, granted, I'm not a uh, I'm not a full time activist. I'm not even really a part time activist. I'm like I'm like the volunteer who doesn't have a set schedule and pops in every couple of months when something is needed to be done or when I'm bored. So, uh, so yeah, I don't know. I guess I can see why people may have assumed she'd heard of uh, Yaniv there for a hot minute at least, but I, like I said, I also generally believe her because I've been, I don't know, I've been watching uh, Cat Black's on online stuff and everything for almost the entire time uh, she's been online, you know, like having a strong presence. So, um, you know, I remember her, uh, her baby trans, uh, uh, genderqueer ID'd period and all of that, so, um, so yeah, I've, I've seen her grow and everything, and I'd like to say that I have a reasonable amount of trust for Cat Black to, you know, tell people the truth when uh, she says something, you know, to be being truthful when she's saying that she's never heard of a person who is allegedly some kind of big activist of sorts, or at least so goes Yaniv's claims when she's actually just being maliciously litigious against. And it's pretty much, you know, like, Yaniv's targets are pretty much exclusively immigrants from what a lot of people have been able to dig up on this history of theirs. And honestly, this is where I'm going to start bringing in some, uh, I don't know, one of these days, pretty soon, just because I don't have, I don't know, I could go back and get my book, but I need to get going in about 10, 15 minutes. So, um, in fact, I'm going to do like the barest minimum of eyeliner, which is in my goddamn bag. Why is it in my bag? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna do a, uh, one of those. I've seen a couple of people, uh, including my, uh, fellow Michigan tuber, Argyle Dinosaur. They, uh, they did a little, uh, get ready with me while they, uh, um, rambled off some unpopular opinions, or at least unpopular considering the circles that, uh, that Argyle tends to, uh, converse with most often. And, you know, this is like a quick little, uh, taste test for that. Oh, gosh. I, I am kind of with, uh, 
Blair White and a few other people a little bit more on the conservative side of TransTube, where I have, and at least, um, I, I'm going to, you know, uh, I'm going to claim some authority of experience in this, because I have, uh, I, I started transitioning ten years ago. Oh god, more than that. It's, uh, yeah, I was, I was 26 then, so it's been, oh god, it's been well over 12, uh, it's been well over 12 years ago at this point now. So, uh, so yeah, it's, <laughs> as it, I don't know, yeah, it's like big 13 or something, uh, but yeah, um, so I've been, I've been in transgender, um, social circles for a while, and there is definitely a contingent of people who at least nominally identify as trans women when it's convenient for them, but make no significant effort toward transitioning, and um, yeah, there may indeed be legit reasons, like maybe it's just out of their reach for whatever reasons. Um, yeah, maybe they'd really like to, but um, there also tends to be a bit... Uh, it can be really subtle. I'll put it that way. It can be really subtle sometimes, but there's usually a moment where it hits you that this person is just a fetishist, and by that, um, so like the most... Uh, talked about kind of um, trans fetishist is the uh, usually a heterosexual identified man who just wants a girl with an extra measurement below the hips to make it as family friendly as possible. Um, so, uh, and then what happens is. Um, so, uh, so yeah, uh, but the other kind is very seldom talked about, um, I'm, but yeah, Yaniv just pings all of my sissy radar, like this, I, I, I firmly believe this person is just a sissy fetishist, uh, just go on FetLife, you'll see what I'm talking about, just follow the correct links, um, like you can, like, search by kink, on their, um, you know, their equivalent of a live journal interests list, basically. Um, so, yeah, I, I have, I firmly believe that Yaniv is a sissy fetishist, that this is just how they get their rocks off, and, um, and, like, so much of this, like, and it's not just their presentation, which seems to be what Blair was going on the most about in that little, um, uh, live stream. I, I don't even want to call it a debate. It was not a debate. It was a hot mess. It was a mess and a half. Um, on the, I mean, at best it was a reasonable person, and in this case Blair, um attempting a debate who with somebody who was just bringing up irrelevant crap left and right and like I said like so much about Yaniv just pings my sissy radar like like this is not a person who I take seriously as being genuinely trans and that's and it's like like I said like go on FetLife you will see dozens, if not hundreds, but definitely dozens. Actually, you will definitely see dozens, um, because it's a very common thing for, uh, people who are otherwise cisgender male to, uh, uh, sort of kink out on the forced feminization thing and, you know, like, obsess on menstruation, like, uh, like, um, most of the trans women I know are just kind of ambivalent about it. 
um, the whole topic of menstruation, like, at most, they, uh, um, they kind of wish they did just because it would help certain factions of society recognize them as being a woman enough, but, um, I don't know. I also haven't gone into depth with it about them because, of course, being on the other end of the transgender identities, uh, thing, but, uh, but yeah, I, I have no doubt in my mind that Yaniv is just a sissy in serious need of some therapy. I mean, yeah, there is a chance. I may be wrong. In which case, I will personally apologize. But, like I said, I... Everything about, everything about Yaniv just ticks my sissy radar, and maybe they were able to get a legit prescription for hormones. Some will turn to, you know, black market hormones. Um, skip androgen blockers uh, in hopes of, or, you know, low dose on androgen blockers just to develop up over the waist, and uh, you know, I'm not about to tell another trans person what to do um, with their transition, you know, that is that is their path alone to decide, but what I am saying is that the whole way that it, it's got, it's, it's so much, like, not even, um, like, a lot of it is just down to their demeanor, and like I said, it's just, a lot of it is also just experience on my part, telling me that this person is almost certainly not legitimately trans. Like, you know, they may have been able to pull one over on a, uh, on a doctor, that's quite possible. My own personal experience tells me that Yaniv is... At most, a very confused sissy who wants the whole world in on their fetish without our consent, and that is that is what I see. Um, and I'm not just saying this because uh, various stuff has come out that they uh, are at least vaguely predatory toward um, teenage girls. I mean, that's, that's no small part of it, especially because I have known so many, or at the very least encountered and gotten a very creepy vibe from so many um, sissies who are just who are also obsessed with age play, and I'm not saying that it alone is necessarily a bad thing, but when juxtaposed with other behaviors and interests can indeed be a very bright red flag, and like I said, that is a Uh, everything combined, I am, I am unconvinced that Yaniv is legitimately trans, and you know you, you can feel free to drag me all you want about that, but, um, but yeah, it's uh, it is what it is, and I am quite firm in my belief in this because. Like I said, I will be the first to apologize if I am indeed somehow wrong about this, which I doubt, but, you know, if I am, by all means, prove me wrong. Just show me that I am wrong on this, and I will, I will immediately apologize and be quite thorough about it. Oh, dear God, please, 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 please. Uh, funny story about the androgel. So, uh, a few weeks ago at game night, um, I uh, I stopped at Walgreens first, and 
um, and it was at the, um, I stopped at Walgreens first and picked up, um, my, uh, my bottles of Androgel, because I get it, uh, three months, uh, I get a 90-day supply, um, and, uh, and a friend of mine was there, and she is a trans woman, and I, um, and she's very open about it. Uh, we're amongst the earliest people there, and uh, then what happens is, um, so I'm getting out the games that I brought, and I, uh, and I take the bag um, from Walgreens, I'm like, that's my medication, we're not doing anything with that. And my friend, she says, no, I want to play that game. And I say, really? You want to play Androgel? Because we can play that game, but I don't think you'll like it. <laughs> and then my friend, she's just like, game is transmisogynist. <laughs> and, you know, we can have a laugh about it like that. But, uh, yeah, I got to throw clothes on. Hey, I literally just missed that bus. So, um, like, just now. Like, it just took off, so I am, uh, and I didn't even put clothes on yet, it's not like I got re-naked, actually I'm wearing my, I'm wearing my jockeys, so, yeah, I'm going to, uh, I don't know, like actually do something semi-presentable with my hair and all, so, yeah, while I'm, uh, while I'm on a roll here about, uh, Oh god, that horrible Canadian sissy who's bringing everybody into their fetish without our consent. Let's let me rattle off some more of my debatably controversial uh, trans opinions. Um, and just because I'm on a roll, I figure why not. And I'm keeping it to opinions on trans stuff. Uh, just because I only need so many stupid comments in a single video, you know? Um, so, um, uh, this is gonna get people calling me too scum and all that, but like I said, I'm an old person. I am, um, and I swear that is why there are some of the uh, so-called left book groups I'm in, which, oh gosh. First, somebody definitely does need um, to uh, experience gender dysphoria in order to, uh, or they should experience gender dysphoria before they transition uh, medically speaking, and the reason I point this out is because people are going to be like, oh, but what about non-binary people? And that's all well and good. That is all well and good, or at least, you know, it theoretically should be, but at the same time, holy shit, I need to hem this skirt. This is really loose on me, so uh, I need to go find a couple safety pins. My box of safety pins was sitting right up on top of my desk, and, uh, I'm at a point where I've realized that the whole non-binary shtick, it means nothing anymore. Um, when I was all young and soft and very, very early to, you know, like maybe just before I started transitioning, um, Non-binary was generally defined as someone who experiences gender dysphoria regardless of whether they are um, gendered as a man or a woman, and that would be, you know, in this society. If, uh, if, if you don't f experience gender dysphoria regardless of how you're gendered, then you're probably not non-binary. And I say probably not, just because I don't want to have an argument with people about this. So, but they probably will anyway, so... Um, but yeah, for the most part, I would say non-binary in this year of our various pantheons 2019 uh, 
it is it has been rendered meaningless it has been rendered meaningless and it has been rendered meaningless by a very similar wave of thought that we once saw in the 1970s and early 80s of political lesbianism now political lesbianism was a relatively short-lived fad um, all things considered, um, but it basically gave birth to the whole notion of lesbian until graduation, the lug, um, if you will, uh, which I do still occasionally hear the term bantered about by, uh, by friends of mine who are lesbians, uh, but basically that whole movement, that it, it was just like this little, oh gosh, I, I don't even remember what got it taking off, but it was basically the idea that, you know, any woman who is just sick and tired of dealing with men, um, telling them what to do and presuming to have, um, um, ownership over her body can declare herself a lesbian and enter into the, these platonic relationships with other political lesbians and, you know, so, like, have all the edginess of appearing lesbian without doing those, you know, so-called icky lesbian things that actual lesbians do amongst each other. I, I, I don't know. I, I've never been one. I never thought I was one. I, I don't know. <laughs> I thought I was bisexual for about a minute and a half. <laughs> <laughs> but that's another story for another time. So, um, so yeah, uh, and so I see, I, I, I feel the whole non-binary thing is basically like a rehashing of that sort of deal where in to, um, to, cause you all, it's almost always young women. It's almost always young women or AFAB persons uh, who are declaring themselves non-binary. And yet, in so many left book circles that... Like, this is a, there are many reasons that I have begun avoiding Facebook from since, like, the beginning of this year. I've just been actively avoiding Facebook, with a few exceptions. Um, and, uh... And yet, I see people coming down on um, the the AMAB non-binaries, you know, just looking to monkey their way into LGBT spaces. And I say, but they are so rare in comparison to these alleged non-binary people who were very clearly assigned female at birth, um, who present very much within a normatively feminine way and are f in spite of their claims to be a bi or pansexual which is basically the same thing uh, and it is it's the same thing it's like you know have have not only only had relationships with men but when requested to di you know disclose some of their crushes uh, it's overwhelmingly men, and very few people who at least appear to be living a female gender. So, like I said, I'm basically seeing the same thing happening over again. Now, that's not to say that I am automatically calling everybody... Even my, you know, various YouTube and Twitter gram friends who identify as number I'm not necessarily calling everybody into question. Uh, in fact, at this point in my life, I have learned enough tact that unless I think it's actually going to help somebody, I, I, I learn to keep my, you know, contrarian opinions to myself. Uh, but yeah, I, I just... You know, if we are friends, just keep in mind, I'm not going to question you about it. I'm not going to call, you know, your identity into question. That is for you to figure out. And I just, I'm just saying that I'm seeing a pattern. And it's a pattern that we have seen before. And it is a pattern that has given birth to um, a very clearly... Uh, like, this is one of the few cases where I'd say that, you know, biphobia is real, because um, you see, uh, you know, you will see, you know, young women in college, you know, ex explore their sexuality, and 
pretty much realize they're bisexual but identify as lesbian and only date other women in college and um, and about half the time you know they'll end up marrying a man uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that they were just playing you know like the whole lug stereotype you know suggests it means that they're probably bisexual and just really want to avoid calling themselves bisexual at any cost. Um, e even if it's, you know, at the cost of just being honest with themselves. So I, 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 I see this pattern emerging again and it, it never goes anywhere good. It never goes anywhere good. And unfortunately, uh, we're just going to have to tough it out because uh, people on the internet have, they have yet to realize that I am often right. Uh, but yeah, the, the internet has yet to realize that I am often right. Granted, so are a lot of other people. But, you know, this is my video, so I get to be the one that's right for a change. Um, so yeah, let's see. Um, you definitely need dysphoria to be trans. Yaniv is a sissy fetishist who is in serious need of some hardcore therapy. Um, non-binary has been rendered meaningless by a collegiate fad. Um, what the hell else can I think of? Um, you know, I used to, um... Hopefully this is a little bit less controversial in some of the circles I'm running in, but I'm sure it's going to spark controversy with some people. After I kind of have a guilty pleasure in watching Blair White videos, like at the best. I, that's not what I'm saying, but I know like because I watch um, other trans people on YouTube ho who are at least a little bit more conservative leaning, and I, and I say that with like heavy dick quotes as I just referenced Blair White. Um, I know she's much further right than I am, but um, but yeah, like, I don't know. I, I know when, uh, you know, I watch videos, I make comments on some videos, some people are probably going to follow those comments of mine into this video, and then what happens is crap and stuff, right? Uh, but, uh, but yeah, where was I going? Um, yeah, I used to be of the mind that if somebody is trans, um, they absolutely should disclose to any, um, ostensibly cisgender person they are dating before it becomes a pants-off situation. And... Um, I would say, okay, that's not necessarily, you know, a necessary thing for trans women who've had, um, bottom surgery, uh, to disclose because, um, you know, it generally looks and acts like a homegrown version, uh, whereas trans men, you know, it's a bit more of an extensive surgery if one is getting a phalloplasty and it may look more like a homegrown, uh, but... It's got, you know, some internal differences and it behaves differently. Or if uh, you go with a metodioplasty like I did, um, it may function like a homegrown, but, you know, y y you're, you're hung like a Vienna sausage at best. Like, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm pretty much living the Alice Cooper thumb cover controversy. Feel free to Google that. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, somebody wandered off with my copy of the thumb cover of Love It to Death, and I've been pissy about it ever since. And that's one of the reasons that I I was a little reluctant at first, but I did come to genuinely embrace um, digital DJing, but that's another story for another time. Uh, so, yeah. Um, but yeah, so I went, I did it all by the book when Isaac and I first started hanging out, uh, 2017, a couple months, actually like just about 11 weeks after my surgery. No, a little more than that. Uh, so yeah, I had my surgery in May of 2017, uh, May the 4th. I've... <laughs> I love it because my my big transition milestones are all on some kind of fake nerdy holiday. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, chest surgery was on a Friday the 13th. Um, first injection of testosterone, obviously, before I switched to uh, Androgel. That was on Devil's Night, which is a Detroit thing, originally anyway, so day before Halloween. And... Uh, <laughs> um, 
lower surgery was on uh, was on Star Wars Day. So, uh, not on Life Day. Not on Life Day. I I I almost wish I had another one that I could schedule for Life Day. That would be entertaining. But um, so yeah, uh, had surgery in May. Uh, let's see, uh, it was like just days before my birthday that I was given the all clear by, uh, by Dr. Malibe to, you know, go and perform life as usual. Uh, there was a minor complication due to that internal catheter. I'll do a I'll, I'll do a story time about that at another time, but, um, so yeah, I had a cheat day where I went out to go see Book of Love that June, so maybe six weeks, no, God, not even six weeks, maybe like five weeks post-op, oh God, I think five weeks exactly, son of a bitch, um, so yeah, about five weeks post-op, I went to go see Book of Love, uh, here in Ann Arbor, uh, but then it was just like, and that barely did any, like, I, 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 Barely anything happened. I just like went out like, you know, with my leg bag coming out of the bladder um, But yeah, I was finally given the all clear just days before my birthday in 2017 and a few weeks after that So yeah, that would be about ten weeks after surgery May to June, June to July uh, That's about eight weeks and then my birthday is in the middle of the month uh, But it wasn't exactly on the first so yeah about like ten little little under 11 weeks, 10 and a half weeks. Uh, so yeah, then um, then Isaac and I started hanging out about two, three weeks after my birthday. So I'm like barely like 13, maybe 14 weeks post-op. And um, like we were hanging out for about a week and then things were getting heavy and it was clear that and now I was being very unprecious about being trans. First off, he works at a Kroger that I always am at and would go to like several times a week because I was not allowed to carry anything more than 15 pounds at a time and um, and fat boys got to eat, right? <laughs> so, uh, um, so yeah, you know, and there's the catheter bag coming off, you know, strapped onto my leg and um, maybe the second time he was over, maybe the third, uh, I was pulling in my laundry from the line and he saw the scar over here. I'd mentioned in some conversation uh, about having my name legally changed, um, you know, within the last year. And like I said, I was being very unprecious about it, but just to be sure, if, moments before it became a pants-off situation, I told him, and, um, and yeah, for most of the next year that he and I were doing whatever the hell it is we were doing, um, you know, if you ask, um, formerly mutual, but now friends of mine, um, what was going on, they'll tell you either he and I were dating or he was using me, because it can't be both, you know, and there is no in-between whatever the hell that was, uh, but that's, again, another thing for another time. So, but yeah, like for the next, most of the next year, when he and I were doing whatever, um, he always used it against me. He always used it against me. Um, in, he'd throw it at me as if, like, this was some moral judgment. Um, and then because he's one of those dipshits who will take anything J.K. Rowling says as gold, um, he decided that, you know, to start, like, jacking off to Magdalene Burns videos, and, yeah. Uh, but then what happens is, um, uh, so, like, just before my recent birthday, um, I, things got very, very heavy, as was evidenced by me putting concealer on my neck. <laughs> um, and I don't even know what what kept me from saying anything about it, but I literally said nothing. I literally said nothing about being trans. Uh, I don't know what was going through my mind other than, uh, other than, please don't reject me for this. So I don't know if that was influencing it, but it was great sex. And, um, and honestly, like, you know, he just worked with it. I don't know, I still don't know if, like, we're still, like, 
conversing almost daily on Facebook Messenger. Uh, he's back in Wales now, and uh, but yeah, we're conversing like almost daily. Um, nothing too deep in the conversation, so obviously this has not come up yet. But I still have no idea if he like put things together and like you know with the scar and everything because I was naked. I was very naked. Um, but yeah, I don't know if he put things together with the scar and figured, okay, this is trans junk, or if he like. A couple people who have seen um, naked um, junk photos of mine without any context, so complete strangers. <laughs> uh, yeah, there there are a couple pictures online. Uh, I'm not gonna say where, but um, but yeah, so it's just like a couple pictures without any context, like no descriptions of what this is, of what's going on. Um, like I, I get, I get frequently enough. I get like approximately every other week some question, uh, commenting on these photos and a very short video, um, asking if I'm intersex. So I don't know. If people see that and they think maybe intersex. Okay, so I don't know what he thinks at this point. I really don't. I don't. I don't know if he's put together that I might be trans, or if. He's assumed intersex, like some people apparently do, but yeah, all I know is that I didn't say anything, and I didn't have to say anything, and he just worked with it, you know, he just worked with it, because, I mean, yeah, it's different, but um, I know very, very early in all of that, I, I asked if he was okay, and he said, yeah, what, why wouldn't it be? I was just like, well, with my situation and the size and uh and no no he just he was okay with it and like i said i said nothing i said nothing about being trans so um at this point i'm just like you know what i mean maybe if you haven't had lower surgery and it is definitely going to become a pants off situation you know you probably should it might be in your best interest but then again we look at cases um zapata i believe uh, where the guy, like, knew the whole time, like, he went and found her on a transgender wait dating site, had sex with her and everything, knowing, and then, you know, flipped out as she was leaving, killed her, took her credit cards and all of that. Um, so yeah, like, especially for trans women, like, you know, even saying something ahead of time, it's not going to be a guarantee, and that's probably just a huge downer to admit that. But at the same time, it's like, um, trans men, it doesn't matter, like, at least in my experience, it doesn't matter if you say anything, like, at least if you've had, you know, um, any lower surgeries, uh, well, more specifically genital surgery, because technically, uh, hysterectomy could count as a lower surgery, I suppose, but yeah, if you've had, if you've had genital reconstruction, in my experience, it doesn't matter, it really doesn't, like, there might be some questions about, like, form or f and or function in one direction or another but you know if if it's a, if it's already a pants off situation and they're they're clearly willing to run with this as is then you know just just let things come as they may um trans men are in a little bit of a better position in that area in that like our murders are few and far between, especially compared to trans women. So, yeah, I don't know. Those are my controversial-ish trans opinions, and I don't know. I, oh, God. Ugh, I hope I didn't miss the next bus. All right, that's and kisses. Slan! In spite of my best efforts, I miss the bus, the absolute last one that is worth going out to Necto at all. Uh, yeah, like, I got outside and it was taking off. So, pfft, fuck it, right? Alright, so, again, uh,